right, guys, in this video, we're going to take a quick look at Adobe's AI generative fill feature, which they've now integrated into the Photoshop beta app. So if you want to get the beta version, you'll simply need to open up the Creative Cloud app on your device, scroll down on the left to beta apps, and then you can download it there. So I've opened up a file in this version myself. And down the bottom here, I have the AI generative tool come up already. So let's take a quick look at how this works. Now I'm just going to rasterize this layer so we can work on it. So this is a single exposure seascape, which I captured recently. It was a spectacular sunset. I shared it with some people. We had an amazing time out there in the field. Now, let's see what you can do with this thing. The way it works is you need to select an area and then it's based on keywords. So what we will do is go up to the selection tools. How about we just use the quick selection tool and why don't we just click and drag on that portion there. Now we have the generative fill box that's popped up and what you do is click that and now it's saying, what do we want to do? I'm going to type in here, why don't we put some crashing waves in? Let's see what it does. Crashing waves rushing to the shore, generate and see what happens. Here it comes. All right, now it's just finished up and wow, look at that result. <laughs> to the untrained eye, it almost looks quite natural. I'm gonna zoom out partially so we get a better view there. And now it looks like we have a few options here or over on the right hand side of this arrow, we can move along what it's locked in and so obviously some are far better and more realistic than others and looks like in the layer panel they create a layer here so you can turn that on and off so that's the original and there we go that's pretty mind-blowing to be honest why don't we try another one just to see how far we can push this go back to full size we'll make a selection how about some birds in the sky why don't we just grab that portion of the sky generative fill backlit birds flying um, why don't we try three of them three times backlit birds flying got no idea if this will work let's find out <laughs> all right so not quite what we're after there um, not what I was thinking anyway I was thinking something a bit small and subtle why don't we just move along okay yeah, that one's bad. Number two, in theory, I don't know if you can minimize that. Let's have a look. No, nah, so let's grab the mask. Yeah, interesting. So I'll delete that layer. Let's try one more just to mess around. Why don't we go with, we'll make another selection. I'm surprised how well it did that water, but I thought the birds would be easier. It's gonna come down to how well you can put the keywords in. Can we add a person here in the distance? Even if we use the lasso tool, maybe make it a little bit easier to select an area to work with. Generative fill, person standing, looking at horizon. So I can see it's gonna come down to a battle of skills with keyword typing. And obviously with this being in the beta version, they're gonna be getting a lot of feedback and data collection to just make this more accurate. Um, it's very interesting time here. Let's see what this does with the person. Gee, not too bad actually, probably better than I th was expecting. What else do we have? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> oh, unbelievable. All right, why don't we leave that person there? And then look, we can thumbs up and thumbs down. So they obviously, you know, want to gather the, the data to see how well they're doing with all of this. And I think we can click this box, hide, pin bar position, reset bar position, just to get it out of the way, we'll hide that. There we go. AI generative fill. Is it the death of photography? Well, if you're like me and you actually enjoy the experience of being out in nature and you're trying to photograph a real literal location that other people can come to and enjoy, then it's not the death of it. If you enjoy the emotion out there, what, what it gives you, the freedom, the thrill and the chase, the trials and eventually hopefully the triumphs, then no, it's not the death of it. If you just like making 
pictures, digital pictures, then yes, getting to the point where you probably don't even need a camera anymore. There's certain um, genres of photography which would really be able to utilize this technology. Say real estate photography, you could photograph an open home and then just put in furniture or something like that. And this is only the early days, so it's going to be interesting to see where this goes to from here. Let me know your thoughts below. It's an interesting time.